I'm Scotty Smith, and this is USL Quick Strike. It's week three of USL, and the week got off to an early start on Wednesday night when New Mexico United secured a 2 1 win. And I got to tell you, Santi Moar might just be the best purely USL player in the league. I got to think he is at this point. His goal Wednesday night, just a few days after that stunning goal at Phoenix, and the way he attacks the defense to set up opportunities for his side, it is fun to watch. Now, notice that I said purely USL player. We'll talk about that in just a minute. Congratulations to the following teams who all secured wins on the weekend. T2, Louisville City, RSL, Tulsa, Colorado Springs, Sacramento Republic, and even our very own Memphis 901 FC. The following teams secured a point by gaining a draw on the weekend. OCSC, New Mexico uh, United in their second match of the week, so a four-point week for New Mexico United. Pittsburgh Riverhounds, El Paso, RGV, Swope Park Rangers, St. Louis FC in that big battle with Tampa for first place in the East. They both maintain, they split the points, one all, uh, one all draw, and they both maintained first place in the East with seven points. Atlanta United 2 gained a draw with Charlotte. We'll talk about that in a minute. Reno, Fresno, and Red Bull 2, as well as Nashville, all of those teams earned a point on the weekend with draws. Romario Williams was the hat trick hero this week. He's no stranger to USL. He'll probably earn USL player of the week, even though he's an MLS player. We'll talk about that in a minute. But really, the MVP of this week might have just been PVC Pipe. Yes, the framework, the goal itself. If keepers are into kissing the post for keeping a ball out, then there were some keepers straight making out with post this weekend. How many times do we see a ball clang off the post? RSL had five goals. They could have had seven had it not been for two posts. Bethlehem hit the post a couple of times in a 1-0 loss to Memphis. And we even saw Kellen Rowe bounce one in off the post, proving that the post could be used for good or ill. Last week's Player of the Week, Brian Brown, was on international duty. Corey Herzog filled in for him. In fact, there were many USL teams across the league that had to find replacements for their international call-ups. That's a good thing for the league. But in an international week, it sometimes can cause teams to scramble for capable replacements. And it was also a week where MLS was down a little bit as far as total games, only five total MLS games. That meant added minutes for certain MLS players. And there can be some debate here. When you got the likes of Dyron Espria, who, by the way, is going to win the goal of the week with an absolute worldie, a bike in the upper 90 is a fantastic goal in any league in the world. It doesn't matter where you're playing. Not only is it impossible to stop, but it's beautiful to see. And Espria is without a doubt going to win goal of the week. But you got Espria scoring goals. Kellen Rowe scoring goals with his 206 MLS appearances. Romario Williams with a hat trick. And I have to say, if this were 2016 and Romario Williams had a hat trick for Charleston Battery, I would absolutely praise him and glorify him and say, oh, Romario Williams, now that, that was a work of pure class. But there there is a question that needs to be asked here, and I recognize the fact that I am new to the league only three weeks in. But if I were a fan of the Charlotte Independents, and if I were to see my team score a game winner in stoppage time, only to have Romario Williams score his third goal a few seconds later, and steal two points, making what would have been a win a draw, if I were that Charlotte Independence fan, I might ask the question, how is it fair that 
Romario Williams is scoring a hat trick against us this week, and he's the first player off the bench for Atlanta next week. It's an interesting question, and I think one needs to be uh, that needs to be asked. We've got what seems to be several yo-yo players in this league. They're up, they're down, they're up, they're down. And MLS could be accused of using USL as a reserve league. Are there rules that USL could put in place to keep this from happening? Perhaps there are. Perhaps there are. Listen up, beautiful people. I want to take just a minute to tell you about our new hosting site, Anchor. Anchor is your one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing your podcast. Best of all, it's 100% free and ridiculously easy to use. And now, Anchor can match you with great sponsors who want to advertise on your podcast. So go to anchor.fm slash start and become part of the Anchor community today. And now, back to the show. Our top dog of the week, and I'm saying this objectively, is our own beloved Memphis 901 FC. They were playing in their first away match in history, and they came away with three points. Now, was it an absolutely atrocious back pass that led to the goal? Sure it was. But still, Rashawn Dolly had some work to do to make sure that he doesn't put that over the bar or off the post or into the side netting. He capitalized on his one opportunity, and Memphis 901 FC defeated the team that finished in the semifinals of the Eastern Conference last year. See, that's what we do with Top Dog. We try to figure out what team that was not in the playoffs last year defeated a team that was in the playoffs last year. Eventually, we'll have enough games in the table to be able to say, okay, the 12th place team defeated the second place team. They're this week's top dog. But for now, an expansion team that goes on the road for the first time and defeats a team that finished in the top eight of the league across the board last year, they deserve our top dog of the week. And while we're at it, let's make mention of the fact that that particular team had Mexican international Marco Fabian on the bench. Now, Fabian did not come into the game, or we might have been talking about a Romario Williams situation in that Memphis and Bethlehem game. But Marco Fabian, yes, that Marco Fabian, the Marco Fabian, Eintracht Frankfurt Marco Fabian, was on the bench, an available substitute for Bethlehem Steel. Let's get you three games to watch this weekend. The first one is at 6.30 on Saturday. Well... The atmosphere may not be that great, but Bethlehem still does have a home game against Pittsburgh Riverhounds, 6.30 Saturday night. Now, this was a matchup between two teams who really uh, had a great match in the playoffs last year. It came down to penalty kicks, Bethlehem advanced, and the Riverhounds probably remember that situation. They'll be looking to get three points when they travel to rural Philadelphia this weekend. Reno 1868 will kick off against Oklahoma City Energy at 8.01 on Saturday night, ESPN+. Plus. Why 8.01? I don't really know, but there has to be some reason. 1868 has been playing well and scoring goals. Oklahoma City looked really, really good until this last weekend where they got blown out of the water by Sacramento. We'll see what happens Saturday night, 8.01 p.m. Phoenix and Colorado Springs play at 9.30. So you'll be able to go 6.30, 8.01, 9.30, just go game to game to game. Phoenix and Colorado Springs. Phoenix is a team that has not lived up to expectations so far, pulling several draws instead of several wins. And Colorado Springs is a team that has exceeded expectations and looked really, really good. So that'll be a fun game to watch. We'll give you a bonus one Sunday afternoon, right after lunch, 12.30 p.m., Central Time, El Paso Locomotive will take on Orange County SC. That'll be a good game. I mean, Orange County, the first seed last year, and El Paso has played well thus far. I think it'll be a solid contest. We'll give you a little bonus one there. That's going to about wrap it up for this week. We are proud to be a part of the Beautiful Game Network. We want you to uh, go to bgn.fm and see all kinds of po- see and listen to podcasts from all over this great country of ours. Uh, Memphis 901 FC plays on Friday night 
against Red Bull Reserves. Also, we're going we're going a little out of order this week, but we do have lined up a special guest analyst to break down Memphis 901 FC's first win in club history, and we will have that episode out on uh, probably on Wednesday of this week. Uh, so that's most likely tomorrow, depending on when you're listening. So uh, be looking for that. That will do it for this week's episode of USL Quick Strike. I'm Scotty Smith. Enjoy your soccer, everybody. Mm-hmm.